Hello, and welcome to our webinar today on Full Lifecycle API Management and its value. I'm Mark Steinbacher from Software AG, and I'm going to step through the business case for why this is desirable and demonstrate how our platforms, Alphabet and Web Methods, facilitate this approach. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at the business case. That is, why is it important to manage API strategically? Today, more than ever, constituents are demanding and expecting digital interactions to not only be available, but to be streamlined, intuitive, and easy to use, to bypass all paper-driven transactions for conducting business with the government agencies on which they rely. And the COVID pandemic has only accelerated this demand. Constituents expect contextualized offerings, 24-7 availability, digital self-service, and seamless experiences across devices and platforms. And APIs, as enablers of these automated processes, not only increase performance and reliability, but unlock essential information often trapped in monolithic and closed applications. This has rightfully driven agencies to adopt and prioritize an API-first development methodology to address and satisfy these constituent expectations and truly enable and accelerate an agency's digital transformation. However, an API-first development methodology is not without its pitfalls. There are risks involved in executing this approach that may interfere with achieving the desired results. For example, sometimes the API-first philosophy translates into autonomous development teams building APIs for everything in their realm without regard to their business value. Or it can be challenging to locate and assign responsibility to those within the organization with the insight and knowledge of the applications and the data that they house, which can make for inefficiencies in API development. Further, development costs can become significant as APIs proliferate, which can result in redundancies and a complex network of dependencies of connected APIs that can be prone to error. And changes can become more cumbersome, which in turn can increase personnel costs and create a skill deficit in the organization. It also can be difficult to identify the API's alignment to the overall business strategy, thereby risking unnecessary work efforts developing and maintaining APIs with minimal strategic value because the strategic context is unknown. And finally, it can be challenging to calculate the return on investment of an API without being able to identify and trace its relationship to delivering value to constituents and understand the full impact of change across the entire enterprise's ecosystem, making it difficult to confidently identify the biggest bang for the buck, that is, the greatest positive impact with minimal disruption for a reasonable cost. Without overall guidance and proper prioritization, all these roadblocks can surface and lead to slow reaction time to fast-changing constituent preferences. Internally, this may also increase the chasm between business and IT, further defeating the purpose of the API-first strategy. So, how do you ensure the success of an API-first strategy, all the while avoiding the roadblocks? The answer is taking full lifecycle management approach that incorporates continual evaluating, planning, and monitoring of APIs through the adoption of a holistic strategic portfolio management, SPM, practice that treats APIs as a strategic asset. SPM is a pragmatic approach to obtain transparency, structure, and governance across the enterprise and realize a full line of sight view from the business strategy all the way to the APIs that enable it. Having this holistic view helps address all the potential roadblocks and provides insights that allow you to not only identify all APIs that are needed, but to prioritize them based upon their strategic value, weight against their development cost, of course. That is, deliver the right APIs in the right order while accounting for the constraints dictated by available budgets, resources, and time thus realizing the API-first vision. To successfully practice full lifecycle API management requires a robust platform that can connect strategic initiatives with IT changes and enables the collecting, maintaining, and analyzing of information across all dimensions of the enterprise, thereby facilitating well-informed decision-making and the building of reliable and meaningful master plans and roadmaps. 
Software AG's fully interoperable alphabet and web method solution delivers all the capabilities you need to truly realize this strategy to execution alignment. Now, let's talk a bit about what it means to treat APIs as a strategic asset and how that translates into an effective full lifecycle API management solution. First and foremost, for this to succeed, it requires collaboration across all the roles of the enterprise, ensuring all stakeholders work cohesively. However, they are used to working in systems that cater to their needs and speak their language. Thus, a unified platform where information can flow from each system to the other so that each stakeholder can view this information in their context is paramount. What you see here is an overview of the interaction between business owners, business and systems analysts, and architects, and IT operations and development that is essential to SPM success. Leveraging the underlying seamlessly integrated Alphabet Web Methods platform to facilitate both the data management and data sharing critical for holistic API management to ensure traceability from strategy to capabilities to functions to API implementations. Strategic change objectives are identified and realized through the connecting and synchronizing of volatile portfolios across the business, where, for example, in Alphabet, business owners capture strategy and business architecture, and in turn, analysts and architects derive demands based upon strategies, customer journey pain points, business capability analysis, etc., which is then used to understand and evaluate the impact to the underlying applications, information, and technologies that support these. Planning and prioritizing of change initiatives based upon those demands and associated resource requirements and constraints can then take place, including assigning roles and responsibilities accordingly. And with the alphabet capabilities for road mapping, workflow controls, and impact analysis, changes can be communicated along with the associated responsibilities and approvals, and ultimately delivering the planned APIs to IT operations, who then utilizes web methods for scheduling and development. In turn, IT feeds back modifications to the existing API inventory and their associated KPIs to be used for future analysis, and the cycle repeats. This is all enabled by the seamless integration between Alphabet and web methods. To ensure business alignment, it helps to start with what is core to the organization. First, understand the business capabilities that are foundational to what an agency does, typically broken down to two or three levels. Capabilities are implementation agnostic and describe the business regardless of the underlying enabling technology. And each capability requires a set of functions for carrying it out. And these functions are often fulfilled by services delivered by applications. And it is this level where one can identify where there are potential gaps in API support. To reiterate, this is all driven from the business perspective. So by understanding the relative criticality of the business capabilities, you begin to identify where APIs are most needed thereby informing the prioritization of API development. This is a key best practice for managing and controlling the API inventory. A related best practice, again, to ensure it is the needs of the business that drives API development decisions, is to perform further analysis using the full traceability provided by Alphabet to understand and identify the level of API support being provided to the critical customer journeys and business processes of the organization. By mapping to these, you obtain better context for recognizing potential gaps as well as performance issues. Remember, on a previous slide, we talked about the closed loop approach where KPIs of the existing APIs are fed back into the planning platform to be considered as part of the impact analysis. Taking this top-down approach, enabled by these best practices, ensures that every API is well understood as to its contribution to the fulfillment of the organization's mission. To take a step back, it's useful to consider the communication aspect of the master plans and roadmaps that are generated as part of full lifecycle API management. As reliable communication across the roles and with key stakeholders is paramount to ensure everyone is on the same page and stay aligned to the overall goals of the digital transformation. 
The following set of guiding principles provide consistency and focus in communicating the digital transformation initiatives, progress, and successes. First and foremost, know your stakeholders and what information they need to be kept apprised, and ensure that information is part of your plans. Don't overcomplicate the plans, as you may lose stakeholder interest or worse their buy-in. Be consistent in your planning and communicating to increase efficiency in conveying the salient points. Focus on the data of the plan and keep it current. Don't let the plan become irrelevant due to overly aged information. With colors and key indicators, convey a dashboard-like view into the plans, which aid in quick comprehension and consumption of the plan information. Plans will change. So make sure that altering the plan is not burdensome or overly time consuming, as that may also lead to outdated, therefore useless plans. Finally, define and enforce clear controls and responsibilities for plan maintenance to ensure accountability for currency of the plans. Alphabet provides mechanisms and capabilities for ensuring all these guiding principles can be followed so you can achieve favorable time to value, both as you get up and running and ongoing. So let's revisit the collaboration from a business data sharing perspective. Thinking about the collaboration between the enterprise architecture and the API management disciplines. In their collaboration, by incorporating the technical services managed by API management into the full business services inventory of the applications managed by enterprise architecture, insight is gained into which business services are supported by APIs and conversely, which services are not supported by APIs, the digital gap, if you will. So, API management shares the API catalog along with the operations provided by each API, which is essential for gaining that holistic picture of the business processes and business capabilities utilizing APIs. And in return, EA shares the application inventory and the business services provided by those applications and which of those are enabled by APIs, thereby providing a clear picture of where APIs might be needed or are most useful. This provides insight into how APIs beneficially contribute to performing a particular business capability, which helps to understand the reach and usage of the API inventory, providing clues that help in prioritizing API development. To summarize the value of this collaboration and the Alphabet Web Methods integration, consider three primary analytical capabilities resulting from instituting full lifecycle API management. First, there is the visualization of all the interrelationships that involve the APIs by linking the APIs imported into Alphabet to existing EA information. This provides numerous important insights, like who are the API providers and consumers, what business units use the API, and what executing processes are supported by these APIs, which business functions and thereby capabilities does the API digitalize, which business contacts should be notified in the case of planned changes to an API, and what is the resulting impact to the operating model. Based on the aggregated transactional KPIs imported, what is the overall quality of the API? Second, analysis can pick up where there are potential gaps or performance issues that impact the organization's mission. From a top-down perspective, one can drill down from business elements such as strategies, capabilities, customer journeys, or processes to see where API support could be enhanced, all the while accounting for the criticality of the particular business element to the organization to appropriately prioritize delivering API specs to IT operations. And from a bottom-up perspective, analysis can identify which are the most problematic APIs with respect to quality, utilizing the KPIs delivered from IT operations as described previously, so that new versions can be planned in consultation with the stakeholders using the API. Taken together with the linkage to EA, this provides a clear understanding of where APIs fit in the overall IT landscape by identifying the processes and capabilities that have API support. For example, if this support is for critical or customer-facing capabilities and the API quality is poor, a new version can be planned to improve the capability's performance. And finally, the advantage of storing this information in a relational database 
combined with the strong analytics and presentation capabilities of Alphabet, is a rich API catalog where APIs can be discovered using a filtered search based upon stored characteristics, such as which APIs are approved for reuse, which APIs are external facing or support customer facing capabilities, which APIs have a point to point design, who is the API vendor, etc., as well as discovered through their association to business elements, such as strategies and goals, or drilling down from business questions to determine API coverage. So now it's time for a demonstration on how to use Alphabet to plan, define, and clearly communicate APIs as part of the services portfolio to better manage the complexity of integrated applications inherent with digitalization. The story starts with reviewing and drilling down from the business strategy to identify and understand where there are gaps in API usage and help prioritize API development, utilizing the interoperability between Alphabet and web methods to facilitate full lifecycle API management. For this demonstration, I've logged into Alphabet and selected the API Catalog Management user profile. Profiles are typically configured for different roles that users play within Alphabet, as it is a strategic portfolio management platform, meaning multiple stakeholders participate and therefore need their perspective represented in order to maintain their respective portfolios and perform role appropriate analysis. For example, API catalog management caters to those responsible for understanding, maintaining, and analyzing the API portfolio. And as you see, it opens with a dashboard view of key functionality and evaluation criteria of the API portfolio. Now I'm going to use a storyboard as a guide for this demonstration. So I'm going to click over here on my storyboards. So this is the storyboard we're going to walk through to demonstrate the strategy to execution approach that full lifecycle API management supports. We're going to start by drilling into the business strategy. So what you see here is an example of a business strategy that is described over here on the left hand side in this explorer view. And the strategy is called serve customers throughout their lifetime. A series of goals have been associated with this strategy that are needed to be achieved in order to achieve and realize the strategy. And I've highlighted foster product and service innovation as an example of one of those goals. And on the right hand side, you see a description of the characteristics of this goal. First and foremost, you see the business capability model that this goal impacts. Those business capabilities that are highlighted in orange are impacted in some manner by this goal customer management, for example. And also the green objects, those represent the type of information that is utilized by that capability as well as far as understanding and executing that capability. So down here in the lower, I'm looking at what we call a portfolio diagram. And I'm gonna hover over one of the circles here. Each of the circles represents a particular business capability. And as you see, I pulled up customer management and as you also see, it is rated very low in both operational excellence as well as customer experience. I mean, it has a very low digital score. Further over here in the tabular report, you'll see that customer management has a required digital score of very high, but its current digital score, as we've just seen, is very low, which means the digital gap is significant. This is a good indicator as why the digital score for customer management as a whole is low. So I want to investigate further what could be causing the low score of customer management. So now I'm drilling into the customer management business capability. And as this comes up, which again you're going to see is a view of the business capability customer management, a similar dashboard like view with an overall score. And I want to call your attention to the set of business functions that are needed to enable or execute this particular business capability. Further, if I look at facilitate biometric claim payment, I'll see that its strategic relevance is fairly high, but it has a very low degree of automation and API quality, and it doesn't even offer an API externally. So facilitate biometric claim payment is probably one of the business functions 
that is contributing to the low overall score of customer management. So I'm going to drill into the facilitate biometric claim payment to see, again, if I can get some information as to what it is that's causing this. So I'm now in the business function, facilitate biometric claim payment, and a view of it, and I'm going to look primarily at this map of the business operation provider. And notice that it fulfills, this is the business function, these are the set of operations, and these are the APIs that support those operations. And as you see right away, three of the business or two of the business operations are supported, but three of the particular operations are not supported by APIs. Initiate transaction, read fingerprint data, and strong custom authentication. What you'll also see is over here on the right-hand side is the applications that provide the API to support those particular operations. And you'll see customer validation is one of those applications that provides some of the API technology. And so I'm going to investigate customer validation to see if maybe it has the capability to also support the other operations within this particular business function. So I'm going to drill into customer validation. And again, as a reminder, look at what we're doing. We've noted the full line of sight traceability that we provide as I continue to drill into key objects. We've gone from the strategy to a goal, to business capability, to a business function, and now to a particular application that supports or provides that business function. And here we see a similar map that we just saw previously on the business function, but now you see that it is from the perspective of the application. And as I look at this, the application supports two business functions, the biometric claim payment that we've been looking at, but also the online claim payment. And you see it fully automates the online claim payment. Further, you'll see that there is an initiate transaction and a strong customer authentication operation that is performed on online claim payment that is fully automated and it is not up here. This tells me that there's some technology that can support further automation of the biometric claim payment. And what I wanna do then is simply tell the application owner, let's update in order to make use of those available APIs to support those particular operations in the biometric claim payment, as well as the online claim payment. You'll notice that read fingerprint data, however, doesn't seem to have a capability or an API down here, which means we might need a new API for that. But in this case, all I really need to do, step one, is to associate an existing API to the operation in order to increase the score, if you will, of the particular business function that we're talking about. So I'm going to edit the API, and what I want to do is, as you see here, here's initiate transaction as it relates to the biometric claim payment, and here's initiate transaction as it relates to online claim payment. All I need to do is tell the system that simply associate initiate claim transaction, payment transaction from CICS to the biometric claim payment. So I added that to the initiate transaction. So you see it here. And just to show you, I'm going to go back to that previous view and that previous map. And as you see here, initiate payment transaction has now been associated to initiate transaction. So what we're doing is we've used existing automation, existing APIs to further automate the, the function, thereby increasing the overall digital score. Now I'm going to go back to our storyboard, and I'm using a bookmark here to do this. The bookmarks are just another way to allow you to shortcut a navigation and go directly to something. You can add bookmarks anywhere you want or as desirable. Um, within the interface that makes it easier for, for your navigation purposes. And just to review, remember we started at the strategy, you drilled into that, took a look at a particular goal, took a look at the capabilities that support that goal, the set of business functions that are needed to execute that capability, 
looked at a provider of those functions to see if we could further automate. And we did. We added the API to one of the operations of the business function. But now what I want to do is I want to go look at adding a new planned API to cover fingerprint data or whatever other operation that needs to be supported. So I'm going to go into the operational service repository and take a look here for adding a new planned API. So what you see here is a report that shows all the APIs that are defined in Alphabet. And you can see over here on the right hand side, some of them are also already defined in web methods in either the API gateway or the API portal. So since I'm going to create a new planned API, the first thing I want to do here is on the alphabet side is create a new technical service. So I'm going to create a new example REST API just to show how we now send this over to web methods once the definition is created. So I'm going to call this the example REST API. And I'm going to fill in the required fields. Everything with an asterisk is a required field. So in order to make sure that I can complete this completely, I want to make sure that those are all filled in. I'm also going to identify which operational repository I want to send it to. And in this case, I'm going to use the API gateway as defined by web methods. Now, the second step I want to do is also indicate how I want it to manipulate information or business objects. And in this case, I'm just going to make it very simple. And I just want it to manipulate the account information. So I'm going to edit its business data usage. And as an architect, I'm simply using the CRUD methodology to define this. And for simplicity, I'm simply going to say I want it to create an update account information. And that's all I'm going to do just to show and demonstrate how this works. So now you see the C and the U are there. And when I get out of here, I'm now in a position that I'm going to be able to send this planned API over to web methods. So now that I've defined the API, I'm going to send it over to the operational repository. And by doing that, what I need to do is select new again. And now you see that export to operational repository is now available to me because this is an API that has been newly created and has not been sent over to web methods previously. I could also create a Swagger file, an open API specification, or a WSDL file. But in this case, since I do want to send it directly to web methods, I'm going to export it to the operational repository. So as you see with this information, the technical service has been successfully exported to the operational repository. And further, you see that the view technical service in repository is now available to me because it is now resident in web methods as well. So I'm going to log into web methods. And take a look at this API that has now been sent over. And as you see, here's the example REST API has been delivered as an API spec. And as you recall, we, as an architect, defined how we wanted it to manipulate information. And in this case, we just used the CRUD methodology to say you wanted it to create and update account information. But you'll see what Alphabet did is it automatically added the methods put and post to that spec so that the architect didn't have to worry about what type of method was needed, you know, as that's API speak, if you will. And so that Alphabet inserted that type of information into the spec so that the architect can just stay in their world and talk about CRUD methodology approach to operating and manipulating data. But the spec comes over to an API developer in a way that they understand with the put and post operations automatically assigned and added for them. Again, this is one of those examples of minimizing miscommunications by Alphabet ensuring that the language used by an architect can be properly translated to the language used by an API developer to avoid those miscommunications. So now I'm going to go back here. And now we're going to talk a bit about what is the full circle, the coming back now. Now that we've sent the planned API to the particular 
operational repository, I also now want to take a look at the round trip, if you will, and going back and bringing the information back from that operational repository. So I'm going to go into this biometric information interpreter business function to show you an example of this. So here you see, again, a view of an API, the biometric information interpreter. But in order to show this full round trip, I'm going to go over to the object profile cockpit. And I'm going to select the master repository deviation analysis and synchronization report. And as this comes up, what it shows you is essentially it's a diff report to show you the differences between the representation of the API in Alphabet and the representation of the API in web methods. And as I look at these, I'm going to fully expand this so you can see all the different options and bring up the legend to show you the meaning of those icons. And again, as I indicated, it's simply a diff report to show you what's been added, what's been removed, or what's possibly been altered. And now that I know there are changes to this repository, I can perform an action of synchronizing with the master repository. And what it'll do is bring all those changes back from web methods back into Alphabet so that we have a complete picture and make sure that everything is synchronized between the two repositories. Now, I'm not actually going to do this because this is my demonstration environment and I don't want to disrupt the data. But that's the idea of that full round trip. So now, just to review, we're going to go back to the storyboard. And as you see, we sent the planned API to the operation repository. And you just saw how we can sync it back from the operation repository in order to do that round trip analysis. And so as the last step, I'm going to jump into the API portfolio view. So here, what you're seeing is the overall API portfolio. That is, all the circles, again, represent an API. But now what we're looking at it is from the perspective of understanding its performance. And in this case, another portfolio type view is here, scored against API latency and the number of invocations. And these are the aggregated KPIs that were returned during that synchronization process back to Alphabet for analysis purposes. And this can help me understand that, for example, anything that has a, a high number of invocations, but it also has high latency, probably is something that is a candidate for redesign in that it is used a lot, but its latency is high, we might be able to improve that. And anything that just simply has a low number of invocations, especially those, as you see this small circle here, with very low strategic relevance, could probably be candidates for removal from the portfolio as a whole because it's not used very often and it's strategically not all that relevant. So it is something that we could consider removal. And again, that now completes our round trip. I'm going to go back to our storyboard just to close things out. To just remind you that this is the whole idea of going from strategy all the way to execution and sending planned APIs, getting the existing APIs back, doing performance analysis, and repeating that loop as a continual full lifecycle API management. So now I'm going to go back to our presentation. So you've seen how the two platforms work together for effective and efficient full lifecycle API management. Now I want to go under the covers a bit and present a little more detail on how the interoperability works. Alphabet offers a bi-directional integration with operational API repositories like you just saw with the API Gateway and API Portal of Web Methods. Alphabet generates API specs and sends them to operational API repositories for completion of development and operationalization while APIs, resources, policies, applications, packages, plans, and aggregated KPIs are imported into Alphabet. And as you saw in the demo, syncing the two repositories is done on a continual basis once an API is represented in both places. Alphabet supports automatic generation of API specs in Swagger and WSDL formats based on CRUD modeling of services and business data. 
These specs are sent as draft APIs to an operational repository where they are developed further. Typically, architects using Alphabet do not write API specs, but model how technical services enable business functions and how these services interact with information architecture assets using the CRUD methodology as we saw in the demo. For example, to enable the business function biometric claim payment, a technical service fingerprint reader may be needed, and this may need to read and create biometric and account information. Based on this CRUD modeling, Alphabet generates a developer-ready API spec, which as you saw in the demo, is sent to an operational repository and used as a guideline by API developers to complete the development of an API. In this way, the system takes care of articulating the API requirements identified by architects in a way that developers can readily understand. This helps teams avoid communication errors and spending hours on rework resulting from misunderstandings due to cross-functional teams not always speaking the same language. In closing, let's revisit the challenges identified at the beginning of this webinar and how full lifecycle API management addresses each one. First, by ensuring that APIs are evaluated against business imperatives, it is straightforward to establish a prioritization for the APIs and communicate that to the API development community. Once you establish an inventory of APIs, research can be undertaken to identify and associate all the key SMEs for each API or API grouping and include that relationship as part of the inventory, publishing these responsibilities accordingly. With a fully prioritized inventory of both needed and already existing APIs, the organization can define the work efforts evolving around the high priority items and perform analysis to find the best available resources and timing for addressing the needed API changes, thereby minimizing costs and avoiding redundant work efforts. By using the business-driven approach of analyzing and aligning API needs to the business strategies of the organization, each API's contribution to achieving desired business outcomes is surfaced and made visible, making it straightforward to ensure only the most strategic APIs get the appropriate investments, and further supports the case for deferring less strategic APIs. Finally, through the ability to holistically analyze an API across the entire enterprise that the single pane of glass view provides, and being able to associate realistic costs to addressing needed API changes, data-driven cost-to-benefit comparisons can be made to inform the enterprise as to which APIs will provide the biggest bang for the buck, thereby enabling the creation of a strong business case for obtaining the funding required. Thank you all for attending and seeing the benefit of full lifecycle API management and how the interoperability between Alphabet and web methods enables this holistic methodology for overseeing your API inventory. If you'd like to further explore how to implement this approach in your organization, please email or otherwise reach out to us here at Software AG. Thanks again for your time and have a great rest of your day.